Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. For those that are new here, my name is Elenia and this is Soft Skill Atelier where I teach you all the skills you need to bring your fashion ideas to life. Finally, even in Berlin, it is slowly getting warmer and spring is around the corner. I wanted to get ready for the warmer days and therefore I am giving you another upcycling tutorial. So this time I'm giving you a quick and easy tutorial on how to make a cowl neck top from a silk scarf from pattern to finished top. So by the end of this tutorial, you will not only know how to transform a silk scarf into a cute adjustable cowl neck top, but you also know one more way on how to consume fashion in a sustainable and creative way. I was collecting silk scarves in secondhand shops and on Vinted. The fun thing about silk scarves is that each and one of them is already a small artwork by itself. So I want to try to preserve a good portion of it as a whole. Furthermore, I wanted to take advantage of the fact that each of the scarves has already really nicely hemmed edges. So I want to incorporate these hemmed edges into my design. So I cannot cut out the fabric how I would cut it out on a store-bought fabric, but I have to carefully decide where each piece is going to be cut out. But now I would say I have talked enough and I won't let you wait any longer and we start right away by looking at all the tools and materials we need to get this project started. So let's do it. You need pattern paper, your silk scarf, some matching yarn, fabric marker, a ruler, round ruler optional, pins, three different kinds of scissors, zigzag scissors, fabric scissors, paper scissors, and some weights. And this amazing tool that helps you to turn some thin straps inside out. We start by creating the sewing pattern. Therefore, I need a few body measurements. Mainly, I need the bust size. And additional to that, I need the estimated length of the top. Make sure you measure in a horizontal line over the widest part of your bust. Starting with the front piece by drawing a vertical line on the pattern paper. In my case, I choose the length of 30 cm. The width of the front size is the bust size divided by 4 plus an additional 2 cm to have a bit more fabric for the draping in the front. In my case, it is 24 cm for the front part. I make a mark on 4 cm to the left on the line and then draw another vertical line down so that I end up with a rectangle of 30 by 24 cm. 12 cm down the side line I make another mark. These two marks are now getting connected by a round curve. I use this curve ruler but I'm sure the curve can also be drawn just fine without the ruler. Now for the back pattern. I continue with a vertical line on the level where the curve from the front part ended. I draw the line 22 cm and make an additional mark midway on 11 cm. And that's pretty much it. Facing, I draw an additional line 4 cm below the back piece line. In the front, I extend the center front line to the top. The extension should have the same length than the distance between the facing line and the upper front line, so it's 16 cm in total. Now I continue by cutting out the front part. And folding it on the upper line, so that the cut edge is lining up with the facing line. And only now I cut out the curved part simultaneously to the facing part so that it's mirrored on there. Going back to the back piece, I extend the height by 4 cm so I can cut out the facing individually. Now 
Now that all pattern pieces are prepared, I start preparing the scarf. Since I want the front to be maximally flowy, I will cut everything out in bias, meaning I need to fold the scarf diagonally. Folding the scarf diagonally leaves me with an interesting design opportunity. I will keep the corner of the scarf attached to the front part of the top. This way I keep much more of the original scarf design intact and it gives me a nice finishing through the pre-hemmed edges and the artwork of the piece. I place the pattern so that the lower side edges of the pattern lines up with the edge of the scarf. I cut out the front piece on the fold, making sure that I add 1cm seam allowance everywhere. Next, the edge of the facing part I trim back with the zigzag scissors, making sure that this way the fabric won't fray. This technique doesn't work for all fabrics. If you see that your edges will still fray, you might need to zigzag or overlock the edges. Moving on by cutting out the back part. I really want to incorporate the corner design of the scarf into the back pieces. So this is how I choose to cut them out. Here it's very important that the two fabric layers lay perfectly on top of each other and don't shift while cutting out. On the side part I left 1cm seam allowance to the hemmed edge. On the bottom side, I lined up the pattern directly with the hemmed edge. On the other two sides, I also added a 1cm seam allowance. On the rest of the fabric, I need to cut out two more things. The two shoulder straps and finally the facing for the back. The shoulder straps should be as long as possible. So I chose this place to cut out two times a 3cm wide strap. For the facing, I fold the rest of the fabric and cut it out on the fold, adding a 1cm seam allowance all around. Now I start the sewing process with the straps. I fold them in half and press them with the iron. Then I sew them together with a straight stitch only half a centimeter next to the edge. After that, I'm using this amazing tool to turn the straps inside out. The little hook on the end of the tool needs to hook into the fabric to be pulled through the whole tube. It's quite easy and the result is super nice. One of the straps naturally turned out a bit longer because they were cut out on a triangle shaped base. So the axis length of the longer one will be cut off and halfened to be used as the loops on the back of the top. You will understand later in the process what I mean with that. Just make sure you don't lose them. Now it's time to work on the front part. By following down the facing part so that the armhole curves line up again. With my fabric it is not so clear what the inside and the outside of the fabric is. But the pretty sides should face each other and we will be working on the inside. The curves need to be carefully pinned together so that they stay in place. In general, the silk is quite slippery and needs to have a lot of pins to secure the fabric. Before I sew the two curves together, I place the straps into the corners right where the fabric is folded and pin it on as well. This way the straps get sewn on at the same time too. And now I sew the curves and only the curves. Now we come to one of my favorite parts. The front piece will be flipped around. I basically only have to pull on the two straps and the whole piece gets flipped around. The curves need some definition by pressing them with the iron. And just like that, the front part is done. Moving on to the back. The two pieces need to be sewn together on the center front. Then, like every other seam on this project, 
The seam needs to get a proper press with the iron from both sides. Moving on to the facing of the back piece. This also needs to be sewn on pretty sides facing each other. The two small pieces of the strap will be placed in the middle of each side between the two layers of fabric. Making sure the strap pieces are folded in half, so that in the end they create little loops that can be used to attach the straps from the front piece. After sewing on the facing, I sew an additional seam that sews together the two seam allowance pieces with the facing to define the upper edge of the back part. I forgot to film that process, but here you see the end result. The back facing will also get a zigzag edge to prevent the fraying. Now it's time to sew the back and the front piece together. I sew them together with a French seam, so I don't have to deal with some raw edges. A French seam basically is sewn with two seams. First I sew the two pieces together on the pretty sides very close to the edge, around 3 mm. I do that by moving the sewing needle towards one side. I trim back the seam allowance even more. After ironing the seam, I fold the fabric so that now the pretty sides facing each other Press it and sew the second seam, so that in the end the raw edges are all wrapped up inside the second seam. If this explanation was not thorough enough, i link you my tutorial on how to sew 7 basic seams in the description. A few small tasks are left to finish up the project. One of them is to tuck in the ends of the strap. This is a bit of a finicky task, but I made it eventually. I also want to add my label. This is obviously not mandatory, but it is an amazing feeling to know that whoever the person is who wears your piece will know who made it. And last but not least, the straps need to be attached to the back loops. Having the loops is a great way to keep the top adjustable so it will fit different body types, but it can also be worn more or less revealing whatever the occasion is. And here it is, my final top. I also made a few more designs. Feel inspired and motivated to start making your own scarf top now. I'd love to see your results. Now the only thing that is left to say is, thanks for watching my video, I hope you liked it. Make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss my next tutorials. I see you soon. Bye!